children in the school premises and beyond. Today we have the doctor in neglected and overlooked. And why I say it's overlooked and neglected is for the number only, but also in children as well. So when we talk about people actually suffering from a lot of dental issues, it is quite aware of children. Sure. Uh, but of course, there are also adults to be blamed for this because equally shocking numbers with the adults as well, because nine out of 10 adults do not even, you know, they're not aware and they also suffer from a lot of dental issues. And more than 76% suffer from cavities, something as, uh, you know, simple as cavities and have root canal issues, etc. Six out of 10 adults do not even visit their dentist until and unless there is uh, an emergency or uh, you know a toothache which you know which is unbearable is only when we usually land up at the dentist it's not and if we talk parents are not even aware of the problems that persist in their children uh, with you know pertaining to dental uh, issues and a majority of them do not even brush their teeth twice daily eight out of ten children suffer from major oral health problems which is quite quite serious which is why this topic in itself is a very important one to be addressed uh, and we are very happy to have dr uh, shrihari here uh, who will be doing this webinar for us today. So welcome, Dr. Uh, Shrihari, uh, for uh, coming in and doing this webinar on dental and oral wellness. Uh, before we you know, take a plunge into the uh, topic, I wanted to introduce and talk a little about Dr. Shrihari, uh, because uh, he's the one with a lot of achievements to his credit, a lot of experience, and I would really like to introduce you all to uh, to you to all you guys. Uh, so, Dr. Shri Hati graduated in the year 2015 from Maratha Mandal Dental College, Belgaum, and completed his master's in pediatrics and preventive dentistry in the year 2019 from Kurg Institute of Dental Sciences, Virajpet, both affiliated to Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences. He has clinical experience of two years as a pediatric dentist and two years as an acad academician. Currently, he works as an assistant professor, senior lecturer at Sri, Sri Ramakrishna Dental College and Hospital, Coimbatore. He has publications in national and international journals to his credit, along with presentation on topics such as conservative management of DMD in children and probiotics in national and international forum. He also has an experience of exposure to Hong Kong University training methodology and learn, learnings under some of the brightest minds in the field of pediatric dentistry at Hong Kong University as a part of the student exchange program during his postgraduate education. Once again, I would really love to welcome Dr. Shri Hari and we really thank you for uh, coming in here and doing the seminar for us. I'm sure there are, there are going to be a lot of takeaways at the end of the session. Over to you, Dr. Shri Hari. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, one and all. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And uh, it's really wonderful to get such an opportunity to uh, you know, present such an important topic for all the children as well as parents and teachers. I'm sure it will be of some use for you all. And maybe some are already aware of all the dental problems that exist in children as well as in adults. But 
for some maybe uh, it may be something new uh, terminologies or uh, maybe new diseases they come across so i would uh, i won't take much of your time and directly jump into the presentation so uh, good afternoon once again so today i'm going to present the topic on confident minds so i'm sure you all will be like wondering how confident smiles and dentistry and dental dk and all that right i'm sure everybody has that question as simple as you take care of your teeth the teeth will take care of you so if you have good teeth obviously you smile much more confidently but uh, imagine uh, there are adults or say children uh, they have dk say especially in front to and all that the time they do shy away from smiling or even some even you know shy away from even talking they start becoming reserved and uh, the problem that exists within their oral cavity will start uh, you know picking the mind again and again so that itself will reduce the confidence that's why you take care of your teeth everything it will take care of you yourself so now everybody will be wondering how to take care of teeth and why should we take care of teeth why is it so important right so the first question is why are teeth important why should you take care of the teeth right so like just the basic thing like how does the teeth help us or in what way is it useful to us one it helps us in appearance appearance if we take look wise beautiful smile okay next is chewing so when we are eating we use our teeth and we chew the food we grind the food so the more we grind the food the better is the nutrition for us so that way again the teeth helps us in chewing and eating next is talking imagine you don't have teeth in your mouth at all and you try talking fine your speech won't be clear because there are certain uh, words in the alphabet which we need the teeth with the help of the teeth will be able to pronounce better right so again it helps in talking then again growth and development you nourish yourself by eating well you grow okay your confidence grows you in person yourself will start growing okay now as your as we know we have two sets of teeth right one is permanent and then is primary or we call it milk teeth when we are kids we have your baby teeth or milk teeth everybody is of the notion that you know milk teeth is not very important which is going to fall off why do we need to treat that okay any day once uh, uh, you know one day or the other is going to fall off new set of teeth is going to come so why do we need to take care of that fine so why is baby or milk teeth important the first most important thing is that it acts as a guide fine it guides the permanent tooth that is underneath into its proper position so as you can see in this picture the milk tooth above the milk tooth right above the milk tooth you can see the permanent tooth so imagine if you don't have a milk tooth right the gaps that are present there that will obviously like uh, you know the adjacent tooth will start moving into the gaps for example if say we are uh, standing in a queue okay one person moves from the queue the entire queue starts collapsing right the same way if one tooth is shed early then the time it is supposed to fall off the tooth that is adjacent that is in front and the back it starts occupying the space and the tooth that is supposed to come in that place won't have any place to come at all so it start coming crooked that is in front back where it's not supposed to come right so that again will start leading to your uh, other uh, dental problems like you know some say the teeth are crooked not aligned properly teeth are too much in front the teeth are too back and all those kind of issues fine so what are we saving our milk teeth from or what are we saving our baby tooth from the major concern as uh, ma'am had mentioned earlier is dk or cavities fine what we do is initially the small amount of dk we ignore we let the dk grow we feed the dk we let it grow 
and then at a stage at a point of time an individual will start experiencing pain or sometimes initially it might occur as sensitivity will start disturbing them or uh, say it doesn't even uh, i mean even the sleep is kind of disturbed that is when they come to the dentist when the problems already reach to a deeper level fine and then based on the situation you take a call whether you can save the tooth or you need to remove it again since it's a say a baby tooth they'll be like why do we need to fill it or why do we need to do any other treatment to save it because it's going to fall eventually but then this tooth like i said one guides your permanent tooth other than that the infection that is present in this tooth will start spreading to the permanent teeth fine and that infection can be seen on a permanent tooth in terms of any kind of a discoloration like say a yellowish spot or sometimes it might be seen as a brownish spot on the tooth as soon as it erupts itself so we are trying to save the milk tooth to reduce the uh, you know any kind of infection on a permanent tooth and also to save the tooth as much as possible so that the permanent tooth comes into the place it is supposed to come in fine so before going into decay as such let us understand how decay occurs everybody loves sweets right sweets bakery items fine anything that contains sugar right everybody has a sweet tooth so we eat a lot of sweets we consume a lot of sugar this sugar becomes food for the bacteria within our mouth fine then this bacteria feeds on this sugar and start making or start producing acids this acid starts damaging the tooth surface that is when you see the dk or a brownish spot or a black spot on the tooth surface but in the meantime when we leave it as is at that initial stage we ignore and we let it grow more and more consumption of sugar more and more food for the bacteria more acid production there is more and more uh, you know cavitated or dk that is progressing into the tooth and then it affects the tooth as a whole fine so this is the like these are few examples that we see on the left side you can see a very initial dk on the left side tooth you can see white spots there that is the initial signs of dk and then we let the white spots grow and then there is slight brownish tinges that you see on the right side of the tooth fine on the right hand side picture you see we just allow the dk to grow so you see the amount of destruction that has happened if at all we had stopped it at the earlier stage as in the left hand side picture it wouldn't have progressed to this stage am i right maybe we could have just adjusted it or filled it with a normal restoration okay but then maybe once it goes deeper and deeper sometimes you may even need a root canal for a baby to to reduce the infection okay so what all can cause cavities other than sugar sugar is the main cause other than that a uh, few of them may lack the outer covering of the tooth that is genetically modified fine then a uh, few people they don't brush properly they just brush for the sake of brushing that shouldn't be the concept behind that so because of that again they may be cavities then some uh, you know kids or even adults they may have lack of saliva so the mouth will become dry on a very frequent basis so there is no saliva to protect your tooth or to clean the tooth surfaces again there is cavity some people may have something called as acidity problem you know uh, there is regurgitation of the acid into the oral cavity or the mouth that also will lead to some amount of destruction of the outside surfaces thereby again leading to cavities so to avoid cavities what can we choose and what can we avoid we need to choose protective foods you know like fruits vegetables and even cheese cheese also helps in maintaining the balance and you should drink more water more of milk okay all this will help in 
the growth and the maintenance of the tooth structure. And also many people, uh, you know, many children, they have, or even adults as such, they have the habit of snacking in between, right? Say we had uh, our lunch say, right now at one o'clock, 1.30. Then again at 2.30, you'll have a small snack. You just go into the kitchen, grab a biscuit, have one or two. Then after again, sometimes say at around 2.15, no, I mean, sorry, 2.30, 2.45, again, you'll go to the kitchen, grab another two or three biscuits, again come. So what are we doing? We are feeding the bacteria. We are not giving time for the mouth to heal. Okay. A mouth at least requires say 45 to 60 minutes to come back to its normal. So if we give time for the mouth to heal by not snacking in between, we can reduce our experience or exposure to cavities. Fine. And what do we avoid? Sweet food sticky food or uh, snacks, you know, nowadays uh, snacks are like very common, junk food as well, fine. What is happening is they're all refined. So they stick to the tooth surface and does not clean very easily. So that, that time what will happen? That will become food for the bacteria. And what we do like, okay, we just had a biscuit. Why do we need to gargle? That concept and we just leave, okay. Another uh, thing that you need to avoid is drinking carbonated drinks or aerated drinks, Coca-Cola, Sprite, Fanta, all this. Again, there is a lot of sugar in that sugar content. We drink, we don't gargle, we just avoid it as just like that. We leave it. That again has an effect on the tooth surface. Sugary drinks, uh, you know, this, uh, okay, if you are of the concept that, okay, we'll avoid carbonated drinks, not good for health. But we'll have this tetra pack juice, right? Like Tropicana, Real, etc. Fine. Even though the juice is there, I mean, we are drinking fruit juice. Fine. There is again, uh, just to make it palatable or so that it's acceptable for everybody. A lot of sugar is again added to the, uh, you know, these fruit juices. So we are like, okay, we just had fruit juice, good for health and all that. But then again, maybe good for health, but not good for your teeth. Then another thing is our uh, syrups, you know, for children, we give uh, these syrups, right? Paracetamol and for fever and for infection and all that. To make it acceptable, uh, you know, for children, they add flavors to them. Fine. You, if you go home and, you know, check back all the syrups that are given for kids. Okay. There'll be, uh, it'll be written strawberry flavor. Okay. Orange flavor. So that it becomes palatable and acceptable for the kids to take in. So again, there is a lot of sugar again added to that. So we consume syrup and we're like, okay, it's just medicine and just leave it as is, not gargle, not clean the tooth surface and leave it as is. And again, that will also slowly and steadily start causing decay. And like I said, snacking all day long. You have a lot of snacks in between. You don't give time for the tooth to, I mean, the mouth to recover and then you have your decay. Then for kids specifically, okay, especially for small kids, infants, you can say, the feeding practices, okay, the kid, uh, kid cries at night, you feed, you don't clean the tooth surface, there's uh, milk surrounding the tooth, coating of milk is there on the tooth surface, becomes food for the bacteria, then again there is production of acids, then decay, okay. At night, just to put the kid to sleep, you give them milk, uh, I mean, you feed them, Again, milk is accumulated on the tooth surface. There may be, uh, again, acid production and decay. Or else we give, uh, you know, with the, I mean, the bottle feeding with milk, we add sugar so that the kid drinks the milk because milk is good for health. Then you add sugar so that the kid accepts it. Again, it stays on the tooth surface. Again, there is leading to cavity. Fine. So to overcome all this, one, you, as soon as we eat anything, we need to gargle properly, fine? I'm not saying you keep brushing. As soon as you eat, go brush. Eat, go brush, no, fine? You brush twice a day, early in the morning, as soon as you get up. And the last thing before sleeping, you brush and you sleep. In between when you're having, you know, your meals, gargle your mouth nicely. See to it, there's no food stuck in your mouth at all. So. A proper rinsing also helps in reducing your 
decay fine so coming to brushing if we say like i said twice daily is a good amount of brushing once in morning and once at night fine and you need to brush for at least 2 minutes fine just don't brush for the sake of it just you i mean you take brush you apply to this you just move here and there then done goggled done that doesn't mean you brush properly fine you need to clean your two at least for 2 minutes and just because you applying force and your Uh, applying a lot of force and your cleaning doesn't mean your teeth will become whiter or the decay will go no okay for that you can use something called as a circular technique fine you keep your brush three tooth at a time and you move the uh, brush in a circular motion and try to and cover all the surfaces of tooth not only the outer surfaces that everybody see okay the surfaces that are inside as well all the surfaces needs to be cleaned so you clean it in a circular motion and also clean your tongue that is also very important because all your microorganism or the bacteria will start harboring on the tongue right so again that will also lead to some amount of decay fine so easy ways you hold your brush at 45 degrees okay to your gums and brush in circular motion so keep a count of 20 times in the entire mouth and you hold on three teeth at a time fine so this will at least take 2 to 2 and a half minutes for you to brush fine and always like i mentioned again and again i'm stressing on it brush twice daily fine now coming to the frequency of changing a brush fine you need to change a brush once in 3 months okay other than that say if at all you felt sick fine any kind of throat infection fever cold and all that it's better you uh, once you become healthy it's better you change the brush because say you've got fever you have been brushing with the tooth okay some amount of micro the bacteria that is causing the infection or the ill health will get transferred to the bristles of the brush fine so once you are healthy again the same uh, what do you say the bristles with a lot of uh, bacteria will be taking and brushing again you might get reinfected so either like once in 3 months you change or else as soon as you i mean after any kind of uh, infection or ill health once you become healthy you change your toothbrush and in the morning and night you once, once before using the toothbrush you just wash it with warm water fine okay now toothpaste okay just because we see in the ad a lot of uh, you know a huge amount of toothpaste is taken on the brush right that doesn't help you a lot fine we are just wasting and we are just overfeeding ourselves with toothpaste fine so for kids from 0 to 3 years of age you take a rice grain size of toothpaste fine just a rice grain size and beyond 3 years okay you take a pea size of toothpaste even for adults a pea size of toothpaste is more than sufficient for cleansing your teeth just because in the advertisement they show a lot of amount of toothpaste is being taken on the brush that entire brush is filled with toothpaste will help you clean no nothing like that just remember for 0 to 3 years is grain of rice and for 3 plus years is p size fine okay now other than brushing what else additive to your brushing can you do to clean your teeth so if you don't clean our teeth like you see in the picture there's something called as there you can see the yellowish markings over the tooth surface right that is called plaque fine some amount of i mean plaque is basically your food debris okay increasing more and more more and more food debris will lead to your plaque formation okay so other than your brushing you need to do even flossing fine at least floss once a day okay and uh, i mean initially when you are small kid you don't need to floss you can start floss uh, flossing after 8 to 9 years of age fine uh, 
you can either buy the floss okay take 18 inches of that and then floss or else to make it much more easier you get uh, handles like same as that of your brush where you can insert your floss and clean it much more easily because you're just taking a thread and cleaning for some people you might find it a bit difficult fine but floss at least once a day that what what will happen is uh, some portions of your tooth right it won't be accessible for your brush so that area so those areas will be clean with the help of a floss okay now you will be wondering like okay the doctor is talking about dk everybody talks about only dk 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 is that the only tooth problems or dental problems that we can face no there are other problems as well other than your cavity or dk first is habits habits is simple you have, you might have seen few kids you know keeping the thumb in the mouth okay uh, some uh, may have the habit of biting onto a pencil or uh, some may have the bite, uh, habit of biting the nails fine some may have the habit of thrusting their tongue okay all these are habits which need to be corrected if we don't correct those habits what will happen is your alignment of the tooth will start altering fine okay other than habits injury fine riding a bicycle we fell down we injured ourselves we got hurt in the mouth you know we fell on our face that time or when kids are learning to walk fine they might fall down while running they might fall down all these are normal fine but if at all they do get injured if at all the teeth does get injured fine like for example uh, the picture on the left side the tooth has been broken completely right so all that issues you you can visit a dental clinic and get it rectified okay sometimes what will happen the tooth might come out of the uh, socket itself completely fine it might have come out of the socket completely that time what you need to do is that if you are able to find the tooth pick the tooth fine and always hold the tooth by its crown that is the white portion of the tooth you hold by its crown and you keep it in a bottle of either saline fine if you are not able to find saline milk milk is very easy to find and one of the best uh, you know ways of uh, holding or saving a tooth okay or else if you are not able to find both you can even keep it in your saliva okay uh, and then you immediately visit the as soon as you i mean uh, once you store the tooth immediately visit the dentist fine uh, that will help us you know place the tooth back into position and might be save the tooth okay uh, if at all uh, es especially for uh, teachers like if at all uh, you see kids you know playing in the playground during school hours and they fall down the tooth does come out no need to panic fine you pick the tooth again hold it by the crown keep it either in the uh, you know in uh, milk or uh, saline or saliva or else you can even keep it in between your cheeks as well okay but immediately come to the dentist so we can give you a first aid and we can place the tooth back into the socket sometimes what will happen not the entire tooth but just a fragment of the tooth right just a piece of a tooth may be broken if at all you are able to find the piece save the piece and bring it to the clinic if you are not able to find the piece it's good i mean it's not a huge issue or anything we can still restore the tooth fine so please do keep it in mind so please do keep it in mind that please do keep it in mind that if at all the tooth does fall out not to panic you can bring it to us immediately you can still try to save it and place it back fine okay another is your grinding many parents do come and they complain the child is grinding their teeth at night fine a uh, few kids what will happen is they'll be grinding at night next day morning the cheeks may be hurting okay but few kids may experience this grinding even in, even during the day fine so there is day grinding and night grinding as well fine 
so few problems may be i mean the grinding may occur if uh, proper deworming is not done okay if at all the kid has any stomach related issues or digestion related issues okay again grinding may occur or uh, the kids may be having breathing problems fine again may need to some amount of grinding if the kids are stressed or anxious which is slightly rare again they might have some amount of grinding or else <clears throat> the tooth are not in proper alignment okay that also may lead to grinding so immediately do i mean report to the dentist and uh, we can find out what the issue is and can solve the problems next is gum disease fine so uh, uh like i mentioned the plaque right so if we let the plaque grow and accumulate without proper brushing that will start causing injury to the gums fine then the gum might start swelling up you can see redness in the gums and we leave it as is the tooth will start becoming loose and come out or else sometimes that infection might spread to the tooth and the tooth might get decayed and become painful as well fine so proper brushing is advised to prevent gum disease proper brushing and even flossing fine okay the one more important thing is to keep your tooth in a fit or a tip top condition you must visit your dentist regularly okay uh, we advise you to visit a dentist at least once in 6 months irrespective of you having any problem or not come for a check up see if there are any issues if there are no issues then good if there are any issues we can solve it and catch them at an early stage and resolve it at that stage itself rather than complicating the issues on a later stage right so you do visit a dentist once in 6 months okay that will be very helpful for maintaining your oral hygiene or to keep your mouth in a very healthy or a tip top condition right okay now few parents and teachers they might have went to get the child or went to take the child to a dentist when should be the first dental visit fine right? we advise as soon as the tooth erupts fine uh sorry within one year of birth you uh, get the child to the dentist they might not be having any dental problems but you know bringing them to a dentist at a very early age what will happen is one they will get familiar with the environment okay they'll start slowly understanding the equipments that are used there and what is being done at a dental clinic so that will give them much more confidence when they come for a next visit or for a visit um, when okay some kind of any dental tooth prob tooth related problems they have so that time they will feel much more comfortable because they have been visiting the dental clinic fine and also you meeting a dentist and the dentist interacting with the child will help will help the child and the dentist to build a good relation to build a good understanding so building that understanding the child will feel very confident to get treated by the dentist okay and also it will help in uh, you know uh, giving a very positive uh, approach for dental health or the oral health fine so with your first dental visit we i mean what a parent can ex uh, expect is that we we'll check for any habits okay if there are any feeding practices we'll try to get it i mean if uh, we can try to get it rectified at the early age so that doesn't cause any issues on the later uh, stages then how to clean or maintain the oral cavity right from that age that we can tell them and uh, there is something called as teething that is when the tooth is erupting the child will become very irritated there may be uh, redness or soreness in the uh, you know oral cavity other than that the uh, child may uh, experience pain child may have fever loose motions and all that kind of issues may come because of the eruption of tooth so how to solve that how to rectify that all that kind of information you can gather from the dentist because you know at the uh, 
first birthday only one or two teeth would have erupted there is lot more to erupt so you can still expect a lot of problems that might occur so you knowing what all to anticipate or what all to expect will uh, you know reduce the anxiety for the parent and uh, also you know will make them much more calmer because they know okay this is what we can expect at this stage or this is what the problem the doctor had told me earlier so that way you will feel much more confident in tackling the issues <clears throat> fine and now how do you prepare a child for a first dental visit so you see to it the child you know has a good sleep at night it has uh, the child has rested well okay the night before appointment and don't talk anything about a dental visit or don't talk about your past experiences so that your past experiences you share with your child okay will give a negative picture to the child right uh, say uh, you had a very uh, bad experience of say pain so that time you talk to uh, that about uh, about that experience to the child the picture of pain will be present in the child and that will give a negative attitude so you should reduce your level of anxiety and you should stay positive as a parent so that itself will reduce the anxiety levels in the uh, in a child and also provide a very positive attitude towards dental treatment fine i guess many of the parents teachers as well as few kids would have had these uh, questions in their mind right and i hope i have answered majority of the questions which are present here and uh, i hope i could do some justice to this topic and uh, you have learned something new or else you have learned something additive to already what you know fine so by with this i like to end my presentation and uh, we are open for questions any thank you Hi. Hello. Sir, you have said that if the child, if the child uh, teeth has been broken in the ground, we can keep it in the thing, right? Milk or saline. Yeah. But uh, but most of the times, what uh, sometimes it happens that the uh, teeth will not be um, broken; it will be hanging it hanging with the uh, gum. What to do in that case? Uh, you know what you can do is you take a piece of cotton or say a gauze piece. Uh, tell or instruct the child to bite onto that and immediately bring the kid to the clinic. Fine. So they holding onto that cotton or the gauze piece, the tooth will still be in. that position itself fine and once you visit the clinic or the hospital wherever you are or visiting based on the uh, need we will try to uh, give the treatment as per what is required sometimes what will happen is the tooth might uh, 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 fall off okay you can even like if you are like, experienced enough you can take the tooth and you can place it yourself in the socket as well and tell the child to bite onto a gauze or a uh, you know cotton and then immediately bring the child to the nearest clinic is the uh, you know the best uh, and one more thing i would like to share is that we usually uh, advise uh, you know we can save a tooth better if uh, i mean once it's come out completely we can be able to save the tooth much better if you visit the clinic within 60 minutes of the incident so but post 60 minutes we can still save the tooth but then again it, it becomes a you know 50 50 chance of saving the tooth in the position hope i have answered your question ma'am
firstly thank you so much dr shrihari uh, it was really an enlightening uh, uh, session actually and considering i myself i'm a mother to a 20 month old daughter and who was really uh, very paranoid about her child's oral health and you know i i i made sure that i got a finger brush when she was 6 month so old and she had her first tooth pop and i had people around me uh, wondering why she so you know uh, paranoid and what is it you know it's just baby tooth which will fall but i believe uh, that it's important to inculcate these uh, you know these habits at a very young age uh, which is carried forward into the adulthood as well i luckily have had a very good oral health all uh, you know over my life but then uh and and i can thank my parents for inculcating those good uh, habits in me and i want to pass it on to my daughter as well but couple of questions that i had dr shiri i am sure uh, you know few of us here might have similar questions uh, so on their behalf as well just wanted to understand if a set of parents have had really bad oral health all their life okay for whatever reasons do yeah. you feel it is genetic do you feel that their child also may have like a very moderate or poor oral health despite inculcating all the good habits or can it be something that you know can work uh, well for the child unlike the parents yeah a uh, good question uh, the thing is actually uh, like i said uh, it's the bacteria that leads to your dk right this bacteria that is uh, that is there it is normally present in our mouth Okay. Yeah. So parents with say a uh, poor uh, oral hygiene, right? They'll have a lot of amount of these bacteria, which is leading to decay. So uh, you know, uh, obviously, you'll be sharing your spoon with the kid. You'll be sharing your towel with the kid. Okay, and when you're, I mean, uh, at a very young age, you'll be nurturing the kid, right? Fine. Okay. So that way, uh, you sharing all that. Uh, will lead to uh, the transfer of these microorganisms that is the heavier load of microorganisms into the child's mouth as well you sharing a spoon the spoon will act as the uh, you know uh, in simple terms as we say the transport or kind of the bus or the auto rickshaw right that transports one person to one place to the another so same way that will act as that transport and transport these microorganisms to the child's uh, mouth and that will again uh increase the risk of the child uh the child's exposure to uh they having or an a uh, child's experience of having a dental dk yeah sure i i think i get that and also when it is suggested for adults you know it is suggested that you should go for a dental clean up or a scaling process every 6 months you know if you have issues of plaque or whatever reasons uh, do you suggest the same for kids or how is it like yeah for kids also we do scaling fine but uh, for kids as we uh, like what we see is the amount of uh, uh, you know for uh, elders if we see these uh, gum related problems are much more severe when compared to kids okay uh, and uh, whatever food debris that accumulates in an adult's uh, like mouth it starts getting harder and harder right so whereas in kids that chance of it becoming hard is much less but some amount of debris is always present surrounding the mouth so that mm. we do uh, i mean we do advise cleaning just that the method of cleaning might vary for adults and uh, for kids okay yeah and also there is a lot of uh, hype i am uh, hype may not be the word but then about using a fluoride toothpaste or a non fluoride toothpaste so fluoridate fluoridation is a good thing or a bad thing you know there are so many mixed reviews about this right there are some uh, toothpaste out there for babies like a pigeon brand for example they have a toothpaste for children which do not contain fluoride at the same time there is a toothpaste called pedifluor which has fluoride in a, in the toothpaste so and pediatric dentists do uh, recommend uh, this as one of the toothpaste uh, for for children so what is the whole thing about fluoridation like is it a good thing in the long run or not a good thing okay uh, fluoride as such in dentistry when you talk to any dentist they say it's kind of a double edged sword fine so it has yeah. its good it has its bad it has its good in its limitations you exceed beyond that it will start becoming harmful anything yeah. for that matter if everything is like that right yeah. so fluoride uh, you asked uh, there are non fluoridated toothpaste yes 
uh, we usually advise use of uh, non fluoridated toothpaste up to 3 years of age okay after okay. 3 years of age you can start using fluoridated toothpaste the reason okay. behind that is that you know a kid below 3 years they don't know how to swallow or spit out properly right yeah, so yeah. we giving up toothpaste they might swallow it accidentally correct so on a frequent basis if they start swallowing there is more and more fluoride content that they are swallowing that may cause some amount of damage to the tooth right huh. it is mm -hmm. not a very evident damage and it is not that it will surely damage it is a very negligible amount that they are swallowing but we what we always say right prevention is always better than cure so we are very trying good. to prevent that from happening so after three years three years of age they are able to control the swallowing and spitting pattern of it so from hmm. that age if we start fluoridated toothpaste Fluoride is said to, uh, you know, reduce the experience for decay and also make the tooth much more stronger. So, but uh, uh, there are few areas within India itself, we call it the fluoride belt, where the amount of fluoride content is in water is already at a higher level. Okay. So they have been already consuming that amount of fluoride. So we giving an additive amount of fluoride won't be recommended for uh, those individuals. Because that will cause more harm than do good for them. Good. Yeah, that is true. And that other is true. Than that, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, no. other, than, other than that, uh, you using, uh, like I, uh, I had mentioned, right, from 0 to 3 years, you're using a rice grain size. Hmm. And beyond 3 years, you're using a pea size. This is hmm. one of the reasons why we are suggesting that size. So that doesn't cause much of a harm to the kid by over ingesting yes. toothpaste. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So when when a dentist uh, say uh, recommends like a topical cream to be applied after brushing your teeth, you know some something like a GC tooth mousse, for example, uh, which is available, and they say there is protein and there's some calcium in that cream, and it's it's good. It it makes the teeth stronger. So what is your opinion on that? Okay, uh, this that also has the same action as that of fluoride. Hmm. That, since uh, many are very skeptical about using fluoride. Uh, hmm. These uh, toothpaste, that is, we call it non fluoridated toothpastes. I mean, yeah. non fluoridated remineralizing agents, basically. Huh. So, huh. this uh, GC tooth mousse, uh, they have milk proteins, few have milk proteins, few have uh, lab created, uh, I mean, uh, you know, synthetically created calciums and all that. That will help in healing the tooth. Uh, hmm. If you remember the slide where I showed DK, right? Yeah. So, on the left hand side, there was a tooth with a very, uh, just a white spot, right? It was not correct, but I called it DK. That is the initial yeah. phase of DK. So with these non-fluoridated like GC tooth mousse and all that, what we try to do is we try to heal that lesion at that stage itself using that cream rather uh -huh. than you know removing some amount of tooth structure and then restoring it because the tooth structure is intact. So we try to just uh, you know try to heal it as is with a topical cream. Correct. Okay, and uh, and same same can be said about discoloration of the tooth as well. Like you talked about the white spots, same can be spoken about the discoloration as well. Like, is that an onset of a, a decay or a cavity? Yeah, it is. Uh, I, uh, for few, okay, uh, it uh, may be because of fluoride. Like I said, because of over uh, consumption of fluoride, there may be some mm -hmm. amount of discoloration. Okay, for some, uh, there are certain genetic conditions which will lead to discoloration. But that will be profuse, that will be generalized. It won't be localized to any one particular tooth. So if it is very localized to one particular tooth, we can suggest it's more of DK. If it is a more generalized kind of a discoloration, maybe some amount of uh, genetic uh, uh, influence is there for sure. And uh, I mean, can that be fixed in the sense that if it's hap the discoloration is happening in the baby tooth, eventually that will fall off. So is there still hope that the child can still go ahead and have a good, uh, you know, oral dental health uh, yeah, once they, they have it? Uh, they can, okay. Uh, we try to restore the tooth with a normal uh, filling material or else we can even place, you know, crowns on top of the tooth so that, uh, okay. uh, you know, uh, the further uh, progression of tooth breakage and all that doesn't happen. Yeah. Great. Uh, it was really insightful. Uh, I, I, I'm I still keeping the forum open for more questions uh, from the audience. I can see Hariharan raised his hand. In yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
There is uh, Kumari, she has written that what will cure for multi tooth in mouth? That's one of the questions on the chat. Uh, Dr. Shrihari, if you could address that. Okay, what will cure? What is the cure for multiple DK? Is it? Uh, multi tooth is what he's written. Multi, I mean, okay, uh, yeah, multi tooth. Okay. Yeah. So th there are conditions where uh, we call it a supernumerary or an extra tooth. Right? They are just. Uh, ex uh, we have a set uh, 20 uh, teeth in total for uh, your milk teeth and uh, 32 or sometimes even 28 in adult set, right? So anything beyond that number, we consider it an ex extra tooth. So we tend, we have to extract, uh, extract that uh, extra teeth that is present. Sometimes maybe what he's ref uh, he or she is referring for multi tooth is that the permanent tooth is erupting but the milk tooth has not fallen yet. So that may be also the, be a condition where you feel, okay, there's an extra tooth there. So that also, if at all that's the situation, again, we extract the tooth. We remove the tooth. That is. And uh, I mean, uh, and is the case similar when it's orthodontic? Like, I mean, in sense, if it's crowded teeth, uh, if that's the case, is it See, if a it's similar treatment? Uh, if it's a crowded teeth and it is within the number I mentioned you, that is uh, like 30 or 28, we, uh, we tend to take kind of uh, certain values to check if you need to extract any tooth to get that space to correct it. Sometimes you don't need to extract a tooth to get a space. Sometimes you might need to remove a conch of few teeth so that we get the space for correction. So everything based on some kind of analysis that we do. Thank you so much, Shrihari. I was actually waiting for more questions to come in. Uh, there is, okay, there are two more questions actually. Uh, yeah. From which age children can put braces for teeth corruption? Okay, uh, for teeth correction, uh, see, we can uh, start at a very early age itself. Okay, children will be undergoing uh, undergoing a growth process or a development process, so we can start correcting at that age. So that at a later stage, the amount of dental problems in terms of crowding and all that is reduced, right? The braces as such, the brackets that we place, we advise once the growth is ceased completely, but there are in, I mean, nowadays we do uh, place braces or brackets uh, at an early age when the child is still growing and uh, we can try and correct the tooth, uh, you know, the alignment at a very early age or a young age. So there's no specific uh, age at which we should start braces or anything. It all depends upon the intensity of the problem. One more question. How to treat crossed teeth and settled teeth? Uh, I didn't actually understand the question. If yeah. Kumarish, if you could just, uh, if you'd like to speak about it, it would be better. Uh, like one teeth, upper uh, upper one teeth, that like. Like, how much? In the morning, you are doing. Sir, that uh, one teeth, uh, upper, that. Uh... And the malacca is doing. In the morning, you are doing. Ah, yes. Okay. See, uh, uh, like I said again, kids are growing. There's some amount of development that happens. Few things are normal. At a certain age, say
say for example at age of 9 okay from age of 9 to 11 the gap that is present in the uh, if we talk about the upper jaw and the gap that is present in between the central teeth that is normal at that age okay uh, once the growth i mean once it goes or uh, proceeds further the gap closes sometimes the gap might not close sometimes the gap closes on itself so the for a certain problems or certain things growth itself will take care of it so certain things we might need to intervene or come in between and try to rectify the problem but again it depends like i said again it all depends upon the intensity of the problem we need to analyze what kind of problem or how uh, severe the problem is and based on that we can you know suggest the treatment and do it accordingly There's one more question that says, uh, "Will brushing the teeth, brushing the teeth twice daily, uh, spoil the enamel?" No, uh, brushing teeth twice daily won't spoil your enamel. But like I said, you applying too much force to this brush, okay, might lead to some amount of enamel wearing off. So don't apply too much force. And how do you check for this? Is that within three months, if your brush completely flares out, okay? all the bristles that were straight have started flaring out it means you are applying too much force and uh, one more cons uh, one more thing is that when we buy a brush we need to check for the consistency of the brush whether it is hard medium or soft for kids we usually apply uh, advise soft bristles because it won't have much effect on the enamel so don't apply too much force while brushing brushing is not for uh, you know whitening the tooth it is just to remove all the debris or the food that has been stuck on the tooth surface yeah there's another question that says can we use mouthwash for a 10 year old kid uh, yes uh, definitely we can use a uh, mouthwash for a uh, 10 year old kid not an issue but for kids we do have a few fluoridated mouthwashes that are there so that it is much more acceptable and palatable for them Sure, I think I think yeah, we are we are good. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shrihari again. Uh, okay, I mean, think we still have questions coming in. Um, salt and lemon can use for yellowish discoloration tooth, and it can spoil enamel. Okay, okay, nothing. It was just a statement. No worries. Okay, thank you, Dr. Shrihari. Uh, it was really a very very good uh, session, and I'm sure everyone uh, who's present here had a lot of takeaways uh, from the webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, and uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, given by Health Basics and uh, Ramakrishna Hospital. I hope I did impart some amount of knowledge, and like I said earlier, hope uh, they have learned something new or something additive to already the what they do. Surely, thank you, definitely. Did. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone uh, who has attended the webinar today. Have a great weekend and take care and be safe. Thank you.